sagen, it's the wrong piece. Oh, Freunde, nicht diese Töne. Lizzie. Sonnen, lass uns angenehmere Anstimmen. Blade und Freudenvollere. Freude, Freude. Freude, 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 schöne Götter, Funken, Tochter aus Elysium. Wir betreten Feuer trunken, himmlische dein Heiligtum. Deine Zauber binden wieder, was die Mode streng getan. Alle Menschen werden Brüder, wo dein sanfter Flügel bald. Deine Zauber binden wieder. Was die Mode streng getan, alle Menschen werden müde, wo ein sanfter Flügel weist. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Make Music Day and welcome to the Sydney Opera House, the Joan Sutherland Theatre and the merry band of the Sydney Philharmonia Choirs. Let's find out who these people are, shall we? On piano we have the wonderful Claire Howard Race. Round of applause. <laughs> yes, we have a live choir here. Look at them, they are alive. They've come out, slithered out of isolation to be here. All the way from the northern beaches we have Lizzie Scott. Soprano, very important. Yes, will, no, no applause for you, Lizzie. No applause for you. <laughs> uh, round of applause for Megzi Solomon. Mm -hmm. Mezzo-soprano, very good. And we have very precious property over here. Very rare, only seen late at night around parts of Darlinghurst. We have a tenor, and his name is Blade Fuller. <laughs> Paid a lot more money than the rest. He's not on JobKeeper. <laughs> and then we have the lovely Robbie Mitchell who is a baritone and has graced his stage in a number of ways over the years. Now, we are basically asking you at home to do the near impossible. Yes, we are. We are going to take Beethoven's hardest piece, his Ode to Joy, and we are going to teach it to you, and you're going to perform it in the luxury of your own living room. So I hope you have that red wine handy and a bottle, oh, maybe a couple of Barocas, because you might need them by the very end. But singing is an absolutely physical act, and your body is your instrument, and I can tell you now, Singing Beethoven 9, even just for the warm-up, is like running a triathlon. So, let's do a warm-up, and we start by just stretching our bodies, um, showing our midriffs, which is very, very nice indeed, and we shake out all the parts of our bodies that can be shaked. And if you've got extra bits, that's brilliant as well. <laughs> Excellent. And we lean over. Oh, and I'm stretching my rib cage. Roger, the rib cage, is very happy indeed. And we're coming back to the other side. And Rufus, who lives on the other side, he's also very happy. And we're shaking our hands, and everything's nice and loose. And I'm going to yawn. Oh! That yawny sensation, which really opens the back of the mouth, is terribly important for Beethoven 9. So we're going to do it again. And. Oh! Now, I let you in on a little secret. Back in the day of Beethoven, in fact, in 1824, when this piece was premiered, the choir did one warm-up, and one warm-up only. It was called a rubber chicken. And this is how it goes. The, the choir who are here today will demonstrate this for you at home. It goes like this. And... Robbie, are you ready? Oh, yes, <laughs> I am. Thank you very much. So rehearsed. Here we go. And it goes... Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. You get the idea. And then, at the, <laughs> and then at the very end, you do the most amazing thing in an accent. You go, chicken. Just like that. You see, you, you too can be a star on the Sydney Opera House Joan Sutherland stage. So, you can do it in any accent. I prefer something between Transylvanian and German. So, apologies for everyone who's Transylvanian or German out there learning this at home. And here we go, a rubber chicken. You will feel warmer than a piece of toast fresh out of the toaster. Here we go. One, two, a one, two, three. A one, one two, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. A one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. A one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. A one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. A one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. A one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. A one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. A one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. A one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. A one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. A one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. A one, two, three
Totally, <laughs> totally ridiculous now, which is great. Good, loosen up and just, I must, I must increase my bus. So just, just <laughs> open up through, oh, hello, sorry, <laughs> wardrobe department. And we're just gonna relax good and then stretch right up, bring the arms down without collapsing in the chest. And you are now in your noble singer's position. Yawn and sigh out on ooh, ooh. ooh. See if you can recognize this terribly well-known tune. Could it be anything else? So therefore, we are going to take that tune and use it as a warm-up. We're going to chew the sound round on a chewy hum. It goes like this. And the aim of the game is to make sure everything is moving around, so everything's really loose and flexible. The choir are going to join us. Here we go. One and two. Keep going. Passionato. So you've already warmed up your resonators, everything is nice and loose. Then known by buskers all around the world as the only piece that actually brings them any money apart from Parker Bell's Cannon. Have a listen to this. Aha! A bit of eine kleine Nacht music, who of course Beethoven met um, Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart in Vienna the first time he went there. Just, to, just thought I'd mention that. And so we're going to do that on a rolled R or a lip trill. It goes like this. Or and it's a really good way of getting your breath moving. Here we go. One and two. Very good. Now, this is sort of like, name the best tunes from the classical music world, which is this one. Probably a little bit early in the afternoon for it, but nevertheless, there it is. We're going to do it on something that really helps our vowels. So I want you to go meow for me and meow for me. Thank you very much. And so basically, by moving that all around, we're going through all the vowels and really warming up all of our articulators. It goes a bit like this. Meow, meow, meow. Meow, meow, meow. Meow, 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 meow. And every time you go for a top note, think up and over. I will demonstrate as we go along with our lovely singers. Here we go. One, two. Meow, meow, meow. Sounded glorious, and every cat in Sydney thanked you. Now, just uh, two more warm ups. One to really get our articulators going. So, see if you can recognize this tune. Yeah. The haven't forgotten, right? So, also, we need to add some words to it, and the words go like this many men, many men, many men, 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 many men, many men. And if you think that is politically incorrect, and an awful, oh no, and an equal amount of women, 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 if you please, when we get to the B section. Let's try it, see how you go. Many men, are you ready, Maxie? Yes. Here we go, oh good, excellent. And one, and two. Many men, 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 many
And we all fall down because we're already exhausted. So basically, we'll just warm up the very tops of our voices. See if you can recognise this very well-known tune. And we're going to go quite high for particularly tenors and sopranos because it's very high, isn't it? Uh, Blade. Yes. <laughs> Just remembered your name. It's very good. Blade. So here we go. We're going to sing Over the Rainbow to a lovely, spacious ooh. One and two. on stage audition for Opera Australia. That's very good. Well, ladies and gentlemen, hopefully you're at home feeling nice and warmed up and now we'd like to dip your toes in a little bit of Beethoven 9. So let's do that. Basically, the text came from Schiller and Beethoven was obsessed by this text from, from a very young age. This idea that all society could come together and particularly on Make Music Day around the concept of music and the idea that music brings joy and therefore joy brings people together in a way that hate and derision divide people. So that's basically the sort of idea there. And, you know, the reason why this piece remains so popular is it can be interpreted on so many different levels. So on Make Music Day, that's my particular uh, interpretation of the piece. The interesting thing is, Beethoven, in a sense, holds the chorus hostage until the very, very end of the piece. So it must have been quite remarkable at the very first performance in 1824, when everyone saw that there was a choir up there and was wondering, well, what are they doing there? Because, of course, nobody knew the piece. It must have been absolutely shocking. And basically what Beethoven does is he takes every single movement that he's played beforehand and more or less rejects it. The first movement, the second move, movement, the third, beautiful um, adagio of the third movement, and then he sort of replays the entire thing in his head at the beginning of the fourth movement, the finale, which we're about to, to look at. And just when you think the baritone's about to come in, they don't. Actually, what comes in is the quietest, most simplest melody ever heard, starting on a beautiful F sharp, and it just goes like this. It's not sung yet. It's played incredibly quietly by the cellos and the double basses, almost imperceptibly, and it just grows as a very simple idea. And I think that's the interesting thing. Beethoven takes a very, very simple theme that virtually anyone can sing. It's, it's basically five notes, da da dee 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 in a very easy part of the voice. So it's like saying, this concept is actually quite simple. To achieve it is extremely hard. And that's what Beethoven, when we perform Beethoven, isn't that true, Megzi? You're a, you're a seasoned Beethoven niner. You've got the t-shirt, you've got the show bag. Um, it's a very hard piece to perform. It demands so much of the singers. So let's start looking at it. He Basically, the, the orchestra sort of almost, you think that's the end of the piece, this triumphant section. And then suddenly you hear, oh, Freunde, oh, friend, friends even, uh, nicht dieser Töne, not these tones, they are jarring, they are pulling us apart, sondern rather let us more joyful ones start to sing. And then he brings in the text of the Schiller, which we are going to learn now. Let's sing it through on just the notes. So here's an E natural. No, an F sharp even. And we go, la, 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 la. So you're just going to sing it to la with the Sydney Philharmonia choirs. Here we go. One and two. La, 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 la. Not bad, 
almost know that tune, which is excellent. <laughs> and the wonderful thing about it is just when you feel that that melody is just becoming a bit predictable, he suddenly adds that, that sense of urgency on an F sharp that comes in just a little bit too soon. <laughs> on the word Alla mentioned Veer and Bruder, all men shall become brothers. Let's have a look at the text. I'm going to speak the text and the choir are going to repeat it. Why don't you repeat it at home? Freude schöne Götter funken. Freude schöne Götter funken. Joy, beautiful divine spark. Tochter aus Elysium. The daughter of Elysium. So we're still talking about joy. Joy is that beautiful divine spark. It is the daughter of Elysium. Wir betreten Feuer trunken. It's so much better if you do the actions. Wir betreten Feuer trunken. See, it just makes life better. And so we enter in this, this sense of joy, almost drunk with fire, fire me meaning sort of passion in a sense. Himmlischer dein Heiligtum. Himmlischer dein Heiligtum. Heavenly one, your shrine. And this is my favorite line. Deine Zauber binden wieder. Deine Zauber binden wieder. Your magic, in my head, music's magic. Deine Zauber binden wieder binds together. This magical joy, this magical music binds us together. Was die Moda strenget all. Was die Moda strenget all. What custom or the government or whoever you're angry at a particular day uh, tries to strongly divide. Then he offers on that sort of anticipated F sharp, alle Menschen werden Brüder. Alle Menschen werden Brüder. All mankind, so mentioned und non mention men and women, uh, all mankind shall become werden Brüder, shall become brother und Schwester, brothers and sisters, uh, über, if I'd bought my glasses, wo dein sanfte Flügel weit, under your beautiful floated canopy. So again, just a marvellous, marvellous you know, thought of how society could actually be, and certainly would be if you could afford to do an arts degree, but that's another story. <laughs> so we are going to sing from Freude Schöner Gott with all the text, and my apologies to all the German speakers out there for the German that I just demonstrated. So here we go, Freude Schöner, one and two. Freude Schöner Götter funken Tochter aus Now, that was very good. I thought the choir did extremely well, but I want them to sing it with lots more passion. I want them to go, <laughs> Freude schöner Götterfunk. I want you to try and imagine the meaning of the text as you're singing it. Here we go, one more time. Freude, joy, one and two. Freude schöner Götterfunk, Tochter aus Elysium, wir betreten Feuer. In traditional performances, that's sung by the baritone soloist. But we are all going to sing that, and then the chorus responds. It's like suddenly everyone in the hall gets the, the, the idea, and they go, Deine Zauber, and they repeat. Let's do that. One and two. Deine Zauber in den Wieder, was die Mode streng hat. Alle Menschen werden Brüder, wo dein sanfter Flügel weilt. So bravo, everyone. You've already learnt the first section. And you've, oddly enough, learnt the second section, because what he does is he takes this idea, this very simple melody, which actually if you listen very carefully, is in every single movement up until this point, but hasn't been allowed to shine, hasn't been allowed to sort of become the principal theme yet until this particular point. Then what he does is it goes through a series of permutations. The next thing that happens to it is a sort of, it's often referred to as a Turkish march, but the, for my money, Beethoven lived in possibly the most turbulent of times, right through the French Revolution and indeed through many of the conquests and failures of the Napoleonic period as well. And Vienna, where he lived for most of his life after moving there from Bonn, 
was nearly constantly under attack in some way. So there's also a sense of taking that music and saying that it is, it is an anthem, it's sort of like the lame is of the 1824s. Um, Freude, schöne, Goethe, Funken. So suddenly when the music comes back, it's no longer this beautiful hymn, what a beautiful concept, it's actually a call to arms. Freude, schöne, Goethe. We're going to do that section now, which in your music is where the tempo suggests allegro assai alla marcia. Alla marcia, like a march. So you've always wanted to be in Les Mis, now's your chance. So, Ah, uh, Freude Schöner. Let's go directly on that. And it's really robust and really sort of bouncy and marcato is the word we're looking for, isn't it, Blade? It is. Excellent. Here we go. So, Freude, one, two. Freude Schöner. Now, Beethoven was probably one of the first composers to take really seriously and almost as a point of expression in its own right, the concept of dynamics and surprise. So it's very interesting. Even in just that little section there, it starts forte, which is just run-of-the-mill loud. Freude, schöne, Goethe, Funken suddenly has a Sforzandi, which is a reinforcement or a sudden accent on certain words. Aus a Tochter, aus Elysium. So you've almost got to get your entire body behind that. Wir betreten Feuertrunken. So again, obviously Feuertrunken, Elysium and Heiligtum meant a great deal to Beethoven because he, he sort of accents as though. But the thing is, where is the meaning in this line? Suddenly, when he gets to alle Menschen wir den Brü, he doubles the dynamic level. It's gone from forte to fortissimo. So if anything, all eyes for meaning are at that particular point. Suddenly, twice as loud. I would like you to try that at home. We're going to go one more time from the alla marcia. And do feel this sort of rhythm in your bodies. It's got to have that sort of energy to it. Here we go from Freude Schöner. One and one and a two. Freude So once you start bringing in those dynamics, it's extraordinary. Now, we've been doing just the unison version. What I'd like you to hear is what Beethoven actually wrote, which he wrote it in four parts. Soprano, alto, tenor, bass, and already the piece has moved on quite a bit in terms of stamina. You will hear that this is already quite high. So for those of you at home, some of you may have the SATB version, and you may be sung this even here at the Sydney Opera House. Have a go at singing what Beethoven wrote, but if you're new to this piece, what you just sang actually fits in with this as well. But already, it's, it's like, it is really like a marathon performing this piece. Each time you turn the page, the, the demands on the singers and the demands on the orchestra have just been lifted ever so slightly. It's sort of like um, Simon Rattle describes this as the magic flute on illegal drugs. And it's the right sort of idea, i.e. all the wonderful ideas of the French Revolution and the, the, the sort of ideas that Mozart explores in the magic flute but there's just, it's, it's slightly more out of control. It's magic flute on steroids, in a sense, in terms of the meaning. We're going to go now with the introduction to the Allegro Assai alla Marcia, and you will hear what Beethoven actually intended the chorus to do. Already quite exhausting, and... And again, we don't know where this music is going. Oh. He's going to the Verdi Requiem on tonight. And then it explodes. Freude, schöne Götter, Funke, Tochter, aus Elysium. Wir betreten Feuertrunken, himmlischen, dein Heiligtum. Deine Zauber binden wieder, was die Ode streng getan
Excellent. So you've already learnt half the piece. Let's go to the next section. Now, another well-known conductor has talked a little bit about this piece and positioned Beethoven very much as the advocate for humanity. So that idea that both in this piece and the Mrs. Slemness, which was written just prior to this, in a sense, Beethoven is pleading on behalf of humanity to experience this joy and that joy is a divine thing. And it's interesting because Beethoven wasn't a particularly religious man, but he did find the sense of God and the sense of the divine in nature, which again makes, makes it very interesting when you start to explore some of the violin sonatas, but indeed, of course, the Pastoral Symphony number no. six. And there are even elements in this piece where you hear that love of nature coming through. But here, I think the, con the composer and the conductor who um, suggested that once to me, I think has got the right idea. It's like he almost says, all of you fall down, sense, try and be aware of this creative spirit that's in the world. Seek him in the starry dome, above the stars, must ein lieber Vater wohnen, must a loving father dwell. Um, and it's a very, it's, it's of course Schiller's idea from the, the poem he wrote in the previous century, but for some reason this seems to really speak to us, particularly to Beethoven in the last couple of years of his life. It's like he literally says, no, the power of music can change your life and it can bring us together in a way that all of this political derision has not, um, particularly in reference to the times in which he lived in Vienna. So this is actually quite a difficult section because it just gets, as you can imagine, higher and higher and higher and higher. So let's listen once to just the melody of Ihr Stutz Nieder. It's in three. One, two, three. impression of the starry firmament there and the music is quite similar to what we've just heard so what we are going to do is we're going to hum it with the singers just so we get you know, to, to grips with this rather tricky uh, melody it starts on a high D so make sure you've got that space ready here we go one two space just listen to those three notes Here we go one more time. One, two, three. That's the scale. Scale. It's like we're climbing higher and higher, starting to sense the divine. He shouts to the world. Phrases one. His favorite thing was Fort Sandy. Vornen, starry firmament. Two, three, breath. Short. And then, just when you think you've got nothing left, he puts a pause on it. Hold that for as long as the conductor decides to hold that note. It's a really difficult section, but a very, very beautiful one. Let's find out what the text is about. Say for me, Ihr stürzt nieder. And? Ihr stürzt nieder. See how many T's you could get in the second word. Here we go, one more time. One, two, three. Ihr stürzt nieder. 
Millionen. Millionen. And Millionen. So, do you not all fall down, you millions of people? Honest do then shopfer. Do you not sense the Creator, the divine spirit, in a sense? Here we go. Honest and honest do then shopfer. Question mark. Welt. The entire world. Do you not get this? And so we just say the word Welt. Welt. And then. Seek him in the starry zone, uh, starry world dome. Such in übem Sternenzelt. Such in übem Sternenzelt. Über Sternen muss ihr wohnen. Über Sternen muss ihr wohnen. Above this starry Sternen uh, world, muss, must, he dwell, the loving Father, ein lieber Vater wohnen. Now, let's try and sing that entire section with the notes and the text. Here we go. And one and two and three. <laughs> when you feel you've got absolutely nothing less, he does this. Just sing it for me. Zeitum Schung and Millie. Here we go. This is sort of like the mad dash to the finishing line. And one and two. Zeitum Schung and Millie on and diese Gusse ganz und Welt. Die ganz und Welt. Friede, liebe Schwänze, was ein lieber Vater, ein lieber Vater. We're going to learn this in a slightly different way. We're going to do the text first. So say for me, Zeit umschlungen. Zeit umschlungen. Millionen. Millionen. Diesen Kuss der ganzen Welt. Diesen Kuss der ganzen Welt. I'm not sure my actions are really helping, but Zeit umschlungen, be embraced. Millionen, we already know, you millions. Diesen Kuss der ganzen, in this loving kiss for the entire world. This, this loving father, he is literally embracing the entire world. Bruder is the word that Beethoven sort of makes more important than any other, in the sense of come together, think as one, and let's sort of conquer whatever it is that we need to conquer via the power of art in many ways. So let's sing Zeit umschlungen, Billionen, diesen Kuss dir ganzen Welt. And Ten times more in tune than I just demonstrated, but my German was sort of okay. Here we go, and Zeit und Schwungen. One and two. Zeit und Schwungen, Millionen, diesen Kuss der ganzen Welt. Der ganzen Welt. Brüder, Freude, 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 Freude,
Excellent. You were incredibly, I don't know how well you did at home, but I'm sure you did an amazing job because that is an incredibly difficult piece. But it is interesting. It's a bit like an Andrew Lloyd Webber musical in the sense that he pops in the most important thing just at the end. So as you walk out of the theatre, you go and buy the cast recording. And the idea in this one is this idea of Freude, Freude schöner Goethefungen. It is joy that is the divine spark. That's the thought that Beethoven wants you to, to have in the back of your mind as you drift out of the auditorium. Now, because we've rehearsed that within an inch of its life, oh, oh. it is now time to do a full performance of this piece. So I'm going to don my very stylish coat. Ladies, gentlemen, please get ready for the performance. Oh, oh, oh yes, oh. excellent. We have some things over there. I'm even going to pick up my magic baton. Check that it's got a battery in it. Yes, yes, doing quite well. Hasn't been used for a while, but still, nice to know it's there. Just yawn and sigh out on ooh. Ooh! ooh. There you go, you're totally ready. We are going to go from O oh, Freude nicht dieser Turner. So remember, these words are Beethoven's words, and basically, they stop the piece dead in its tracks and say, no, we could go down another path. Here it is. Oh, Freunde, nicht diese Töne. Stimmen und Freuden vollere.
sorry, ladies. I don't, this, this is buzzing for some reason. I don't, so, excuse me, excuse me. What? Oh, hello, Gladys. Yes, yes. Oh, really? No. Really? Oh, how, how smashing. I say, everyone, I've just heard that the Sydney Symphony Orchestra just happened to be next door in the newly renovated concert hall. What with my choir? The Sydney Philomena, well, they could have told me. And Edo Devard, oh, he's so friendly and cuddly. Oh, how delicious. Shall we, shall we just pop over there and do it with them? Yes, shall we? Here we go. Beethoven 9 with the Sydney Symphony Orchestra, Sydney Philharmonia Choir, and the marvellous and very cuddly Edo Devart.